But when a whole generation of people try to write you off, like, we have the generation we have now, they think the Chicago ball scene started in 2000. They think that whatever New York says goes. New York is not familiar with the Chicago ball scene. A few people in New York are familiar with what's been going on in the Chicago ball room. And Wardell was actually the first person I've ever seen ball game. Actually in club, LeRae. He came to meet John Dan Chris say, it's this, this dance these children doing in New York, and they're carrying on. They're all over the place. And she said, I click with you. <laughs> um, and then, like I say, with uh, Avant Garde coming out in 86, we were being exposed to the New York ball format and to voguing. We actually had a friend named you Sam. Sam, right. Sam was Dark based King. from New York. Okay. But Sam, I thought we were discussing this or what? Yeah. With Big Lip. Yeah. I, Sam came to Chicago, baby, and that motherfucker got on, excuse my French, he got on the stage at Club Luray and he was letting the children act it. Mm -hmm. Then we got a full understanding of what it was, what Vogue was. Through, uh, this right here, fair. this Vanity Fair was brought to our attention. Oh, the Vanity Fair. And we were seeing how the children in New York were stocking it, so we wanted to stock it to them. And we knew more deal to create those types of things. Exactly. Okay. As early as the early 90s, Chicago ball scene started before any other city outside of New the East Coast. We started before Detroit, we started before Atlanta, we started from scratch. Everything that was agreed upon on the side in the house was agreed upon between the three of us. It was agreed upon that you would be the house father, you would go out and recruit people, and I would hold rehearsals. Okay. Is the way that that was actually, um... That's how we did it. Yeah. So, we started learning from any little bits and tid tidbits we can get our hands on. Uh, started seeing videos on uh, MTV, uh, Liz Torres, Madonna's, of course. Uh, the, vote, the video that I learned from pretty much is Deep in Vogue, which was featuring Willie Ninja, which I later got a chance to meet him. Any video clips you could catch of Vogue, the occasional person that came in town, uh, we would be at a club, and you could immediately tell if someone was a voguer and was from out of town because the way their hands would like kind of raise, they would pull out bones, but they would just kind of like, you know, and then their hand would kind of go up and be like, oh, there's a voguer. Come on, y'all, get them. <laughs> we would all, we would all <laughs> hit it over to wherever they were. Uh, and it's like, you know, I would imagine how it would feel to come from out of town and have nine or nine, nine girls come at you wanting to battle you. Exactly. That's actually how we did it. As far as the first members, were me, you, and Tommy. Automatically, we, in we included John T and Chris and Tarani because they were part of our clique at the time. Yeah. Tyrone was the first outsider that came into the house. Um, every alto. Right. After him, it could have been Kelly, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. And I think you brought Aaron in. No, no you, all, you all got Aaron out of you got Aaron. Bistro. Yeah, yeah after Kelly did out. come Aaron, because you all got Aaron out of Bistro, was it? You all were telling me about this little nerd that y'all saw that bitch was broken her ass off of something. And when she came to the basement, I gagged at her because she was a little, a little nerd. <laughs> it was always a lot of times a clash, too. Oh, yeah. It was like about 50% of us probably are Aquarius. And I'm Aquarius. Are you an Aquarius one now? Yeah, and so am I. Yeah. Oh, Steve, there you go. Right. We were the ones who led the way here in the Midwest because we were the only ones doing it. We were sitting in Tracy's basement, come up with fashion designs. We would sew them in the basement. Wardell, Tra Tracy, would help us in our stitching. And because nobody was really doing it, and we were kind of like standing out, we didn't have any competition. There were no other houses. There was one other house, because I came from the house we mine, but we never did anything. So when somebody else asked me that I want to be in a house of avant-garde, I was like, sure. And I <laughs> she bought plenty of fabric. And, and we would buy our fabric, and, and that's how we became closely knit as a family because we spent that quality time making the garments and then going out. It was no longer go buying the garments. We made our garments and we went out. And even though we got the drinks thrown of us, and even though because they called us fag at the fag bar, yeah, we still carried on. Oh, well, why are these kids still voguing three years later? Madonna sued. They stopped playing the record. Why That's the other thing, too. We, but were, we were doing it before exactly. Madonna even came through with the song. We, we were, we were, so, the whole thing, because we became 
popular when the whole bone craze hit the media with the Madonna thing. Exactly. We had been practicing and learning and researching prior to that because by the time Madonna came out, uh, I was still out my guard member, we were able to submit uh, an entry to the MTV Award, or not MTV Award, MTV Vogue Video Contest, and we were one of the $1,000 winners. Out of 10 winners, we were like, they picked 10 winners, and we were one of the 10 winners. And if we hadn't been practicing and doing what we needed to do to get to the level we needed to be able to do that, then we wouldn't have been able to submit anything for that contest. Um, Looking so back, we started before Madonna. So uh, looking, looking back on the video uh, 